We're back, everyone. Today we have an interesting talk to share with you about fungus. Now, Richard, you know, when you think about mm -hmm. do you have a fungal problem, most people off the bat would say no. No. Right, you know. exactly. They but then when we start talking about all our different ailments and the situations in our, in our life, we see there's an underlying theme that always comes back to fungus. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a ubiquitous germ. It's all around us. It's the recycler. We're exposed to fungus every single day of our life. And the thing is, a healthy person is quite resistant to serious fungal infections, maybe pick up a little athlete's foot at the gym or something, but that's easy to get rid of for the most part. We usually have to tinker with something. You have to uh, suffer an insult or be on a certain medicine to open the door for fungus. And so as we start our discussion of fungal disease, and trust me, if, if you have a fungal problem or yeast in the intestinal tract, dysbiosis, you're not going to get better until we address it. Uh, you know, I hate dogma. But this is the one dogmatic part of our whole approach to this. If you have dysbiosis, it has to be fixed. If you have fungus, you got to fix that. Got to get it out of you as best you can, or your overall health is not going to get better. Now, let's take a look at what opens the door to fungus. This is real important because if you have some of these factors in your personal medical history, you know you're at risk. First is antibiotic use. You know, antibiotics save lives but they are overused, and one dose of an antibiotic, one pill, can lead to a, a yeast infection. That's unusual. That doesn't usually happen that way, but the more antibiotics you've taken, the more likely. And I'm not telling you to never take them. Just be careful with them. If you have antibiotic use in your history, there's a good chance you have yeast troubles. Have you been on a steroid or an immune-suppressing drug like prednisone, cortisone, metrol dose pack, Remicade, Embrel, these are used for rheumatoid arthritis. Drugs used to suppress immunity after an organ transplant. Okay? You don't want to reject the drug. Well, that's opening the door for fungus because the same part of the immune system that recognizes your organs and self-tissue also deals with fungus. Suppress that part, you're going to have a problem. Hormone therapies, or oral birth control pills, hormone replacement therapy, a wide and long list of medications can lead to fungal disease. Any medicine that constipates, any medicine that causes diarrhea or suppresses pain can cause fungal problems. So Let that you, sink in. Honey, are you saying that the pain relievers, the narcotic pain relievers yes. that so many because people are Because they constipate. On? They constipate. They slow the gut down proliferation. Okay. That's just part of the, the side effect profile of a narcotic. Mm -hmm. Even an ibuprofen type medicine alters the prostaglandin, the chemistry of the gut. It alters the chemistry of the gut can lead to fungal infections. Who would have thought that there would be a That doesn't do it in everybody, but you know, you add mm -hmm. this, that, and the other, and all of a sudden you got a problem. That's, right. how, that's how it works, okay? Medical conditions that compromise the immunity can open the door to fungal infections. Diabetes. Are you diabetic? The better your control of your diabetes, the less immune suppression. Have you had cancer? Are you fighting cancer now? Are you in therapy for cancer? That all opens the door. AIDS patients and AIDS-like conditions. Now, for you doctors and healthcare professionals, any condition that results in neutropenia, that's a type of white blood cell, folks, the neutrophil, if that's low, you're prone to fungus. If you have diminished cell-mediated immunity, that can lead to fungus. Either one of those, that's the key for the doctors and, and nurses. Uh, any type of compromised skin mucosa, skin or mucosa, the mouth, sores in the mouth can lead to fungal infiltration, yeast, thrush, this type of thing. Um, um, uh, macerated skin, traumatized skin, uh, that can lead to yeast and fungal infections. Environmental factors, okay? We all know that if a flood comes into your area, it's going to bring mold and mildew, absolutely. But it doesn't have to be a grand scale flood. It can be a, a, a leaky faucet that's dripping onto the floor, et cetera, et cetera, you know, and the mold grows. <laughs> We've all seen this. Well, a healthy person can even be overwhelmed with high counts of mold. Keep that in mind. You can be perfectly healthy, but you're just overwhelmed with it. You know, yeah, it'll, it'll gain a foothold. Travel to ecosystems that harbor specific type of fungi. And I'm talking about like the Ohio River Valley, histoplasmosis, the San Joaquin Valley or the deserts of Arizona, you know, California, San Joaquin Valley, that's coccidioidomycosis or valley fever, okay? That's a dry climate. Who would have thought fungus would grow there? Now, people who grow up in the Ohio River Valley 
are not so likely to get histoplasmosis. But if you lived in California and took a visit to Cincinnati, you're more likely to get it because it's new to you. Make sense? And vice versa. If you live in Cincinnati, let's go out west. I've never been to Hollywood. Let's go see it. You spend some time out there. Oh, boy, I'm sick. You're the person who's going to get it, not the person who ra was raised in Southern California or the San Joaquin Valley, just a little further north from here. Got the idea? Travel to areas you're not used to. Opens the door. These, these are the things that do it, folks. Let's keep in mind. Heredity, there are familial lines that are more susceptible to that. That's a little harder to determine because, you know, 50, 100, 150 years ago, we really don't know why people died unless it was a traumatic injury, right? We don't know all the details of that, but that can happen. Stress, oh, the stress, <laughs> yeah, suppresses the immune system. Poor nutrition, travel, exposure to large quantities, even if you're uh, healthy. Women, the very old, the very young, and those who are health challenged. That's kind of the overlay, okay? That's the overlay. Allergies and sinusitis. This one is really emerging, uh, this knowledge, and it's helping a lot of people come to understand exactly why. Chronic sinus, just think fungal infiltration of those sinuses. We've got to deal with it. We just have to deal with it. Or you're going to stay in pain, you're going to be miserable. Well, some common fungal infections that uh, some are serious, some are not. Tinea pedis, athlete's foot, ringworm, uh, ringworm of the scalp. We've all heard of these things. Uh, Tinea barbae, that's in the beard for men. You know, a lot of men don't shave because they get folliculitis and problems on their face. Shaving is it's traumatic, see? Uh, braid the skin, compromise the, the surface. You tend to get infections, see? So it's not... There are a lot of reasons why men may wear a beard. A tinea versicolor, jock itch, dandruff, these are all fungal related. Not serious usually, not serious, but it may be a sign that you're susceptible, okay? Candida albicans, the one we've heard so much about. There are at least 12 different uh, candida species that can cause disease in humans. And what has emerged in recent years is the wide recognition now that candida can cause a deeply invasive infection. Not just in the bloodstream, not just on the skin and in the mouth, but into tissues. And this is what we're seeing a lot of. So we're going to go to our break, and when we return, let's talk to some of your callers. Now, you may not realize your condition has its basis in yeast fungi, but there's a good chance it is, and we'll help you get out of it after these important messages.